Welcome to this ASN Kidney 360 podcast. I'm Katherine Taylor, Assistant Professor from the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. Today I'll be talking about a study our team conducted published in Kidney 360 this November. It's entitled Material Need Insecurities Among People on Hemodialysis, Sociodemographic Risk Factors and Associations with Substance Use. I want to start by explaining what we mean by material need insecurities. In this study, we looked at food insecurity and housing instability specifically. They can both impact dialysis outcomes through behaviors like dietary adherence and through access to home dialysis therapies. We also know from research in other populations that material need insecurities and substance use may be mutually reinforcing. So for example, people describe smoking cigarettes to manage their hunger or their stress about food and housing. So these issues are very clinically relevant, but we don't know who's at risk for material need insecurities and how these risk factors are related in the dialysis population. And so we conducted this study to find out. We collected primary survey data about food insecurity, housing instability, and substance use from a convenient sample of adults on hemodialysis. And we also collected survey data about potential individual and area level sociodemographic risk factors, things like age, gender, financial strain, and residential segregation based on participant zip code. The first key finding to me is the high rate of material need insecurities we saw in the sample. So 305 participants from 17 urban, suburban, and rural facilities in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia answered our study surveys, and 36% of the sample had some level of food insecurity in the previous year. That means, at a minimum, they worried about food or couldn't afford to eat balanced meals, and 18% were worried they wouldn't have a safe place to live in the next 90 days. Just imagine what that does to someone's ability to self-manage their kidney disease. Then we looked at sociodemographic risk factors for material need insecurities. And as you'd expect, lower income, financial strain, those things were risk factors, but younger age was also a risk factor. So for example, almost half of adults age 54 or younger experienced food insecurity in the last year. And what we found was that residential segregation was driving a lot of that risk. In residentially segregated cities like Baltimore, food insecurity rates were nearly 60% among those younger adults. And lastly, we found that people experiencing food insecurity were more likely to smoke cigarettes. Well, this question is actually difficult to answer. Uh, We don't have large cohort studies looking at material need insecurities among people on hemodialysis. So it's hard to compare rates or associations. Um, But just for comparison, One study published in 2006 looked at food insecurity across three dialysis facilities in Louisiana. And out of 98 adults on hemodialysis, 16% experienced food insecurity. They found that black participants were more likely to experience food insecurity than white participants, but they didn't account for structural drivers like residential segregation. A more recent study of 32 adults across three dialysis facilities in Austin, Texas, reported 44% experiencing food insecurity and 31% reporting housing instability. Part of their inclusion criteria was people with Medicaid insurance, so we might expect rates to be a little bit higher in that sample. And as you can see, these are all kind of smaller sample sizes. We definitely need to include items about material need insecurities in larger cohort studies so we can learn more and really target interventions. So one of the limitations is that we recruited a convenient sample directly from dialysis facilities. So we may have undersampled people with the highest burden of material need insecurities who might be the ones to miss more dialysis treatments. And we also measured food insecurity and housing instability once but material need insecurities do change over time. So to me, it's really unacceptable that people on hemodialysis have routine touch points with the healthcare system and still experience hunger or challenges with housing. And that's not a reflection of our dialysis facility teams. I think there are bigger issues here about the fact that dialysis facilities are really structured as the place where people get dialysis 
instead of something more like a person-centered medical home. And the finding that I mentioned before about residential segregation really fits right in with conceptual frameworks that link structural racism and health outcomes in kidney disease. The NIDDK convened a workshop last year to identify multi-level interventions to address the impact of structural racism on kidney health disparities. And so I want to refer people to those recommendations. Those were things like more frequent screening for social determinants of health, partnering people on dialysis with community health workers to address social needs, or addressing the actual community food environment. In conclusion, food insecurity and housing instability are common among people on hemodialysis. And like other social determinants of health, they cluster within structurally disadvantaged communities. So we really need multi-level interventions that can immediately include frequent screening for material need insecurities and referral. Thank you for joining us on this Kidney 360 podcast. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology. All rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified healthcare professional if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast from the American Society of Nephrology.